so the next chapter which we are going to start in operating systems is process and process management so in this chapter initially we are going to discuss the basic concept of a process what is a process how we schedule the process what are the states of the process and then we are going to discuss about what are the different scheduling algorithms these scheduling algorithms are used to schedule a process that means when I'm saying scheduling it means that uh, if a process uh, is in secondary memory then you have to run that process into the CPU then if you have multiple processes and out of these processes which process you want to execute in the CPU that is called as process scheduling so in the process we have various attributes of a process which we will discuss and we have various states of a process which we will discuss okay so uh, in the previous uh, videos or in, in the previous chapters we already discussed about uh, what are what is a uh, operating system and what are the different types of operating system and here we will start with the discussion uh, uh, we'll start with the discussion about the processes okay so what is a process a uh, process is basically a program in execution see whenever you write a program that program generally resides in the secondary memory and uh, when you run that program that uh, the execution of that program is generally done in main memory so you can view it like this this is your secondary memory secondary memory for example you have hard disk this is your main memory this is your main memory this is your CPU this is your CPU right so we have a hierarchy here we first of all we have secondary memory then we have main memory then we have cache memory then we have registers then we have CPU and so on so I'm not showing the cache memory and registers here because right now my main aim is to show you what is a process right so when you write a program that program generally resides in the secondary memory right this is secondary memory now when you execute this program then you take this program from the secondary memory and you bring it to the main memory so now it becomes a process now it becomes a process process so you can say a program in execution is called as a process a program in execution is called as a process now the operating system is responsible for creating and deletion of both the system and the user processes uh, and the scheduling of these processes right so when I'm saying uh, system and the user processes there are two types of processes number one is system process process and second one is the user process is the user process so system processes are the processes which are created by your operating system to perform it, its task and the user processes are the processes which are created by the user for example you created some your your own uh, set of programs or you installed some set of programs on your operating system and if those programs are going to run then they will create a user process because they are created by you but system system processes are basically uh, generated by your operating system itself so i told you that operating system is acting as an interface between the user program and the computer hardware so generally what happens is user program interacts with the operating system and then operating system in turn interacts with the computer hardware so the processes which run inside the operating system or by, by the operating system they are called as system processes but the pro processes which are above that operating system that means which are interacting with the operating system they are actually the user processes you have different process uh, different programs for example even if you use different uh, applications like you have torrent you have um, download managers you have different web browsers these actually these web browsers these torrents these are actually user processes but we have pro system processes also which run by your operating system uh, now this system process also run on your on the kernel level as well as the user level that we will discuss at later point of time okay so now you can say a process is more than a program code it also includes the current activity as well as the representation by the value of the program counter and the contents of the processor registers okay so you can say see every process is going to have some set of instructions there are some set of instructions 
if you are executing a certain instruction then there is something called as program counter which will tell what is the address of the next instruction which you want to execute which you want to execute okay but you can say a program is in terms of program is a passive entity but a process is an active entity program is a passive entity you can say a program is a passive entity passive entity and a process is an active entity and the process is an active entity because the process is actively running but program is not actively running at at at, at all the times right so uh, a process also includes process stack some uh, te temporary variables data variable section and so on see there are different whenever whenever you have a process see whenever you have a process like this now there are different uh, memories which is required by this process which we discussed in um, compiler design a process uh, when the memory is allocated to a process then there's a something uh, there's a memory which is only a read only memory read only memory this is a read only memory and in this memory we are going to store the executable code we are going to store the executable code for example if you have a c code then we can use c code something like a dot out c code which uh, which uh, generally uh, which is which is executable file created by the uh, c compiler so first of all uh, uh, if you are going to run a program then to to that program that program will become a process and there's some memory allocated to that process and i'm going to i'm giving you a description of that memory in that memory we are going to have a section or an area which is going to contain the executable code and this will be read only area because we don't want the code to be changed while you are running the program right so you can say while you are running the program it is it is a read only area so we don't actually change the code at all right so second area is given to your uh, static variables given to your static variables and global variables and global variables and this remaining area is actually divided into two parts it is not a fixed division but this remaining area is divided into two parts the first part is given to the heap and second part is given as a stack now what is the relation of all these areas so let us discuss about this area first the, the static variable and the global variable what is the difference between a static variable and a global variable if you have a program like this assume this is a function fun and it is doing integer a is equal to 5 and then printf percentage d comma a plus plus then you have one more function fun2 you have static integer a is equal to 5 and then you have printf percentage d comma a plus plus and then you have a global variable which is integer a is equal to 5 right and then in the main function you are calling fun then you are calling fun2 then you are calling fun then you are calling fun2 again you are calling fun again you are calling fun2 and so on like this okay now here this variable is a local variable of this function we can have a local variable of this function like we have or we can have use a global variable here we can do printf percentage d comma a now this is a global variable this variable is a global variable this variable is a local variable to this function now this is static variable right so what is the difference between all these variables is if you have a static variable then static variable does actually they they remain till the end of the execution of the program right but if for example if you have a local variable like this which is integer a is equal to 5 then this is also called as an auto variable auto variable now this variable uh, actually destroys as soon as you finish the function right so let me show, show it to you 
if we have this main function now this main function is calling the function fun so control will transfer to this function fun there will be a variable a memory is allocated to a it will store 5 then we are going to print 5 and its value will become 6 and as soon as this function is finished this memory is destroyed this memory is destroyed okay then again then we are calling function to fun2 then uh, uh, we are, uh, the control will pass to the function fun2 there will be a variable a because it is a static variable so it will not be destroyed it will store 5 and then we if we are printing the value so it will print 5 and the value will become 6 after the end of this function this variable is not at all destroyed now again if you are calling the function fun this function then uh, the variable a the memory will be allocated to variable a it will store the value 5 and then uh, if you do a plus plus it will print 5 and it will make the value 6 and as soon as this function is finished this memory is destroyed again if you call the function 2 fun2 now we are not going to initialize the variable again we are not going to declare the variable again because static variables are initialized once like this right you can change the values later on but it it is initialized once like this and then it, it is not declared uh, it is the memory is not you know, declared again and again so it, it, it is not destroyed as soon as you know the function is finished but this variable will be destroyed as soon as the function is finished so here we are going to print the value which is 6 and it will make the value as 7 again if you call the function fun then function fun will print the value as 5 but if you call the function fun2 then it will print the value as 7 and it will make the value as 8 right and if you print the value of a after this then this is going to print the global variable value which is 5 now what is the difference between a static uh, this uh, what is the use of this global variable and static variable even if uh, you know uh, the function calling is already finished then static variables are not destroyed and even the global variable will remain till the execution of the program till the end of the execution of the program so both the global variable and static variable we require them till the execution of the program that is why the uh, we store them on a different memory location and this memory location is both read and write it is both read and write it is both read and write okay and the variables like this which is integer a is equal to 5 these variables are uh, auto variables are actually stored in the form of heaps uh, because uh, we need them again and again so even in case of java you can see the variables which you are going to declare uh, which are not static they will be stored in the form of heaps in java we create static classes we create static uh, classes so those class or you can say static function so for example we have public static void main in java so those static function uh, are does exist even if even without creating the object of that particular class right so here you can see that uh, the static variables and the global variables we require a separate memory for them so they, they will be stored here and the rest of the memory is divided into stacks and heaps first of all why do we actually need a stack see if you write recursive program the recursive program and the recursive calling is only possible if you have a stack because you have to uh, uh, track and take care of the previous function call right so without the help of stack you will not be able to use the recursive programming and you will not be able to use the power of recursive programming that is why stack area is very important and even heaps are used to arrange and manage the variables and so on that we will discuss okay so you can say to a process these types of memories are located we have a stack we have a heap we have a static variable we have an executable code location which is a read only location this is a read and write location and there's no physical separation between stack and heap stack and heap both grow from a different direction and whichever require more memory that that will take it right and if for example at some locations uh, the program tries to cross the boundaries of this process this is this is complete this complete is called as the boundaries of this process so if at some point of time you can see a program is trying to cross the boundary of a process then we get a segmentation fault then we get segmentation fault okay that that we will see okay so as of now just understand that a, a, a process is <laughs> sorry i'm so sorry the process requires a memory and that memory is uh, given like this 
and these are the areas of these uh, uh, which are provided to this process now now a process is having some kind of attributes which are associated with it process is having some kind of attributes write it down attributes of a process attributes of a process attributes of a process the first attribute of a process is called as a process id is called as process id the second attribute of a process is called as program counter we have program counter third third attribute of a process is called as process state process state the fourth attribute is priority associated with the process the priority associated with the process and the fifth attribute is related to the general purpose register general purpose registers which are allocated to that process which are allocated to that process and then sixth attribute is a list of open files which the process is as already is using list of open files seventh is list of open devices list of open devices list of open files list of open devices and the eighth one is protection eighth one is protection now these process attributes actually changes from operating system to operating system you can go to uh, you can google search it for linux operating system even if, if you have ubuntu if you have fedora if you have red hat linux for all those operating system we have uh, if for a process there are we have different attributes in the same way if you are going to use an operating system which is windows 10 or windows 8 windows 7 then these operating systems are going to have different attributes which are they are using as a process attribute now these process attribute changes from operating system to operating system or you can say the operating system developer to operating system developer uh, so the team which built the operating system so these attributes actually change from operating system to operating system they are not at all fixed but these are the standardized attributes which everyone has to use because we use them right so a part of this there are a lot of different attributes which they can use or they they are using to uh, make their uh, you know, operating system more e efficient and more effective